Yep. All right. So the next topic and the last topic is uh, for test data management for DevOps, right? So, um, so I, I think Ash had mentioned this before that you know uh, this is one of our major use cases with our with our customers. They they uh, in many situations actually they buy active your software for this specific use case and then grow into the backup and disaster recovery. And of course the other thing also happens where they buy it for backup and disaster recovery and then over a period of time, oh, wait a second, I can provision multiple virtual copies of databases so I can use it for DevOps. So it goes both ways. Um, so the key problem that we are solving is database cloning, right? People have all this, you know, the digital economy drives so much data into these databases and now people want to uh, test their code very quickly on copies of production and it's hard to get the copies of production. So that's where uh, we solve the problem. And of course, database downtime is always in the back of every DBA's mind. And the third aspect is, if they have been using uh, traditional technologies of replicating data at a storage layer from, one, from point A to point B, they will not necessarily work when they want to leverage on-demand public cloud, right? So that, those storage replication technologies will not work in a public cloud situation, or even between two public clouds, right? So it has to come, be a software-based approach and uh, that's what we bring in. So typically, if you look at uh, the current practices, uh, if somebody has a one terabyte database and they need 10 copies for various uh, teams, like dev, QA, integration testing, performance testing, and so on, they might make 10 physical copies. And you'll be surprised. You'll be like, why can't they use storage snapshots? Because, again, there's a the tug of war between the storage guy and the DBA, because DBA, they want RMAN copies, as an example, for core Yes. Right? Uh, but as storage guys, like, okay, just take thin provision clones and go use it. DBAs don't like it. So what do they do? They thin end up creating provisioning was created so storage guys could lie to DBAs. <laughs> 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 right? So that, that's always the tug of war. So, what, so they end up creating physical copies. Or even worse, they do data subsetting. The challenges with data subsetting is you write an awesome piece of code that works just fine. The UI response is great, comes back in less than three seconds because you had only one million rows in your test okay. database. The moment you put it on a 100 terabyte database with like 50 million rows, it takes 20 seconds, right? Not acceptable. So the solution you is- You don't need indices with small databases. <laughs> the solution that we bring in is, we create that gold copy, and from that gold copy, you can then start providing <clears throat> these virtual databases, completely integrated with the databases, so that you know when a developer sits on this laptop, clicks a button, the entire database is online. He doesn't have to un understand how the storage works or how the thin copies are being provisioned by Active, none of that, right? Even better, they don't even have to learn the Active user interface, and that's what we like the most. Some of our largest financial customers, the way they have done is they have existing portals, pick service now, he's gonna do a demo, right? So, so they have existing portals and they completely integrate via APIs, and developers or testers they're just going to the portal and spinning up their virtual databases. They don't even have to learn ActiveView. Yeah, yeah. So with that, I'll give it to Brian for the demo. Thank you. <clears throat> so to, to Chandra's point, you know, the way our customers use ActiveView uh, for test and development is really, really kind of two ways. One is you know, where they want to go is fully automated CI, CD, DevOps, having tools like Chef Puppet, you know, orchestrate multiple things, and, and Actifio brings the virtual database into that you know, entire workflow with Jenkins involved and build servers and all this sort of thing. And we have customers doing that, um, but a lot of customers start off somewhere, um, somewhere in the middle. We'll see if my login timed out again. Um, they, they might want to plug Actifio into an existing process. They want to get to DevOps, they want to get to CI, CD, but for now, you know, what can you do to help my existing process? Back to your kind of operational you know, question earlier, you know, Keith. And so here's an integration, a demo we're gonna do quickly with this now, right? Plug into an existing <coughs> tool of record and give self-service to the DBAs, add a lot of agility, but let's not that, let them go hog wild and create a bunch of messes you know, somewhere else in the environment. And so we've got an Actifio item here in our catalog, and we've got two uh, tasks that we can do. The first is I can do uh, listing images, right? So I'm a developer. I want to refresh my environment. So it says, okay, where, where, you know, where is this, this database? This is on a, a, a um, server called HQ SQL. And you know, where does that image live? What type of application is it? And you know, what's the name of the DB that you're looking for? Is this a service catalog you guys created or that the end user would create? Well, the ServiceNow developer. Yeah, it's, it's the latter. This is one, this is just a, a, a okay. very simple one we have in our demo lab. We okay. have customers that have done more complicated things right in their, in yep. their ServiceNow yeah. implementation, but this is just a proof of concept demo you know, kind of an idea. 
So I, I went in and said, I'm a developer. Show me what images I can, I can refresh from. I want to refresh my environment. It gives me an order number. It can get routed at this point for approvals and change control and all that sort of ServiceNow stuff, right? And I'm going to refresh my email. Or I'm going to attempt to. We'll see how that works with the logins. This will take about a minute. And what I'm going to get is I'm eventually going to get an email that tells me an inventory of all the images uh, that are available to me. And what I can do then is check which image I want, paste it into the next form, and it's going to provision a virtual, uh, virtual database. Let me go get that set up while we're doing that. I will log into that server. You have customers that would actually make a REST API call and pull the actual list here. A absolutely. For actual, okay. 100%. Yeah, this is, and this is using our REST API, API yeah. call to do this. Everything we do is, we're, you know, we're an API first uh, company. Everything we do is um, built on this RESTful API, including these user interfaces, including our command line. Mm -hmm. And so this integration is actually using our RESTful API to, to do what I'm showing you. Um, but again, it's the, you know, everyone loves the API, and, they, and, and we have a lot of customers doing a lot of advanced things with it. But in most cases, what we found is they want to, to, you know, they want to go to, it's like cloud. They want to get there, but they're not there yet. They want to get to this fully automated, but they're not there yet. What they do have today is ServiceNow. What they do have today is, you know, Tivoli Scheduler or some, mm -hmm. some other enterprise tool, right, that they want to plug into. So I kind of want to show quickly here in the last few minutes um, both of those kind of uh, use cases. So this is the target server. This is SQL Server 2014. This one's in Azure, right? Um, we're using a lot of different clouds here today in this demo um, just to kind of showcase uh, that we run anywhere. We're software. We're platform independent, infrastructure independent. So let's see if my got my email. There we go. There's my email from IT Service Desk, right, that, that ServiceNow just kicked out. It says there's one image here available from you know, June. Uh, OK, great, I want to refresh it. So I just copy and paste that. I go back to my service catalog here. I click on my Actifio. And OK, I want to refresh my, my virtual database, or I want to provision a new one. So we'll call it you know, you know, new DB, being very creative. Um, we're going to call it uh, SA Azure SQL. Right? We've set this up in Azure. I'm going to paste in that image number that tells me which exact image I want to use. And if I didn't fat finger anything, uh, this will all work. Let's see. Okay, my order's been submitted. Depends on how you, oh, this could get routed to their manager for approval. This could get managed, you know, routed to the monitoring people to make sure that they're monitoring these test instances or chargeback or whatever, right? So it's obviously just a simple example of how it would plug into a complicated, complex environment like an enterprise customer using something like ServiceNow in, in, in anger. Um, but the point is, the end user didn't have to use an Actifio user interface, didn't have to learn a new tool, didn't have to do any scripting. They just use ServiceNow. And again, what you're going to see is, similar to the previous demos, we're going to have a new, uh, in Azure, in the cloud, uh, my SQL server, my sandbox, I'm going to have a new uh, disk device show up, and the data that I need just happens to already be on there. And in this case, it's, um, I believe, uh, five terabytes, five terabyte SQL database being spun up in a couple of minutes. So while this isn't exactly giving uh, DBAs the raw disk space that they want so they can do an RMAN, restore and copy, this right. is putting the control and giving them a sense of control. Exactly. And you know what? I can, I can deal with a copy of the database as another file system could, versus... Yeah, but could you build this in RMAN? Well, it is in RMAN. We absolutely Okay, so they could do this in an RMAN format. They're just well, not but, we're, but we're doing it for them. They're doing it in okay. R-Man. We're doing R-Man for you versus right. the DBA right. doing the R-Man command yeah, themselves. Yeah. And but for, but they can do it themselves. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, we're not, we're, not a tar we're not storage like a target. Okay. Right? So, okay. so our, our view is you know, R-Man's the tool to use. That's the, that's the one the DBA is like. That's what Oracle recommends you yep. use. We automated it for you, right? That's really the, so we're doing that. But we're, if when we drive it, we can then do what they call image copy with yep. incremental merge to incremental forever updates. Yep. Right. And, and just like thin provisioning, they can think they have what exactly. they asked for, yep. but they can really have what we decided they should have. And so um, hide vegetables in their dinner. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a new, a new drive, a seven terabyte disk with two terabytes free. There's five terabytes of information on that disk that wasn't there before. It's virtual. All the reads are free. You pay for the rights. This one's using, not using object tower. This is using faster storage right in the cloud. <laughs> uh, and if I, if I refresh this, we didn't, we didn't only just present the data, we didn't only present the disk, oh, we, made, we made it into a running it. database, right? Oh. So we automate storage admin, yeah. sysadmin, DBA, and backup admin things that typically, in, an art, in a large enterprise, it would take customers about two weeks to do this if it's well run, about eight weeks to do this if it's not well run. And the reason is ticket, ticket, <laughs> ticket, ticket, ticket. <laughs> it's not a technical challenge, it's a human process challenge, right? 
is tickets with the backup guys, tickets with the sysadmins, tickets with the DBAs. We, we give you self-service in two minutes. And Spin four meetings of the change control committee. <laughs> well, that's where the service now comes in, right? So if you want to put change control around it, you can. Um, if you don't, we can do the RESTful APIs directly. We showed Ansible last year's Tech Field Day, so you can watch that. Mm -hmm. We have other videos online. We'll post some, some additional ones where we're using Puppet and Chef to do uh, similar orchestration for that kind of next-gen you know, DevOps CICD use case. All right. We leave it up to Brylan. We could be doing demos for the next that is four or five days. And we would keep questioning. <laughs> well, if we didn't have somebody else coming in, we would appreciate it. We could, uh, Steven merge, we could merge the storage virtualization to data virtualization. That's right that, next right behind. Right? But, but, but Stephen has a schedule. He keeps yeah. us too like a slave driver. That's right. So I, I do want to thank you, folks. And I want to leave you with a few things. I think, one, we are on a mission to make data an asset that truly strategic for the enterprise, your data, somebody else's data that you're, you are leveraging, or we have, we have uh, use cases where people actually use their data and use Actifio as a PayPal. If data is the new currency, you'll start seeing new financial-like instruments being applied to data. We have customers who use Actifio to publish their data, like a YouTube for data, like a PayPal for data. This is remarkable what people are doing with, with uh, the, one of the most strategic assets we have. So the mission for us is to come back and have this new platform as an integral part of how you think about IT, how you think about your business. And there are two ways to solve this problem, right? There's the ultimate middleware. Ultimate middleware is data. You've got apps on the top, infrastructure on the, on the bottom. And we started from the top. We understand applications. We understand business policies. And we assume we will do the best we can from whatever infrastructure is available. And that is the key, whether it's you know, object storage didn't exist two and a half years ago. We spent some time looking at six years of, of data from our customer base and finally found that the curves get to the point where the intersection of, of cost versus ease of use becomes relevant for us to bring it to our, our customer base. So the mission is to drive infrastructure to be one of those flexible assets <coughs> that you can really uh, align your workloads to, to, uh, to the economics. But more importantly, it's allow, it's allow organizations to, to take their data, build new applications, become a digital company, and de develop and deploy faster and faster. So uh, uh, across the board, there's, there are thousands of uh, users who help us. Uh, you know, I think there were two or three uh, product capabilities that have already come out in 8.1 um, based on the discussion here. We love to learn. We love. To, uh, we, you know, we are fundamentally technologists to try to think about how best to get the product use. So anything you guys can think of, I think, uh, Rachel, we're going to spend some time with you to try to give you the, the sparse file system details on why we have a, 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 a very, very interesting computer science problem we have solved when it comes to data. Very interesting. You know, we become, a lot of us come from the data world where the assumptions I think things like the questions being asked about object storage, right? There's a convention of how we think about how object storage is and what's used, and here we are saying, ah, not really. We, you can do a completely different way because you start from a very different way and how you get data in, how you, how you manage it, and how you use it. So I want to thank you, and uh, we look forward to announcing the next big one. This is a phenomenal forum for us, and uh, Stephen has been kind enough to uh, give us an opportunity, and you guys have been kind enough to listen. So thank you again.